I'm joined today with a good friend, Pete Evans. Hi. Good to see you again, mate. Hey, Matty, you too. Yeah, you got your new book out that you've been, um, you just were saying then you're just finishing some audio versions of that. So how's that going? Well, it's great. I think we've released three cookbooks or three books this year. We did uh, Dinner and Five, which just came out about a month ago. Uh, previous to that, we released Heal, mm. which is <laughs> that, yeah. Heal with Pete Evans. And uh, prior to that one at the start of the year, I forget what we released. I think it was, um, I'd have to look back. Mm -hmm. There's about 20 books out there. Now. Yeah, there's so a lot, there's a lot and, of Pete Evans. And I've got about three or four coming out next year too, so. Mm. Um, but they're good. Yeah, yeah. And they help people, and they help me. And that's what you're about. And I just feel so, I get personally angered a little bit, or not angered, but just frustrated when people. Let that people, go, brother, let that I know, go. see, you're, you're good for me, Pete, because I see, <laughs> Couple of my family, ah oh, no, Pete, Pete's not like that. But I just don't like when people like to, you know, make up stories or take things and wrench it from context and try and take away from the good message that you're that someone's trying to proclaim. Yeah, well, I don't even try. No, okay. <laughs> I just do. Or and I and I be. And I share messages through social media. Mm. It's up to people if they choose to follow that or not. Mm. You know, no one can force anybody to follow anybody else's opinions or ideologies or beliefs. Yes. Well, maybe religion and <laughs> politics and <laughs> things like that, but we won't go there. But as far as what I choose to share is an expression of um, what I've learned along this journey. Mm. And I share it in a way that uh, is comfortable for me yeah. using the tools and the skills that I have. So social media is one of those tools it's a great tool for sharing yeah. and again people can choose to follow or unfollow mm. the cookbooks that I release into the marketplace people have the choice of whether they would like to buy them or not mm -hmm. so again nobody is forcing anybody to follow these beliefs or ideologies um, what else have we created we created a film called the magic pill mm. which is on Netflix and other streaming services again no one is forcing anybody to watch that. You would have to say that for an adult, they have the choice as to what they click on. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm not trying to do anything. All I'm doing is expressing my creative uh, passions. Mm. And what comes from that, I have no expectation. Mm. All my intention is, is to follow my intuition and my gut and do the things that make me happy and bring me joy and and you keep me keep me fulfilled and yeah. and content because mm. there's this mm. thing about being human is we we thrive when we're learning yes mm -hmm. and we also thrive when we're sharing mm -hmm. or teaching mm -hmm. so and exactly what we're doing now this is this is a combination of two individuals that are here to connect, mm. share, learn. Mm. You know, I'm sitting here learning about you, mm. and you're here to interview me and ask me questions, which will then be shared with whoever decides to yeah, come we, across this. And yeah, we have to really make. I think it's. I think it's intelligent for us to understand that nobody's forcing anybody to do anything yeah, I with agree. the information that I share. Mm. So on the flip side of that, we get a lot of negativity. We get a lot of, I mean, I got an, a message today from someone on social media, direct message, and they said, hey, you know, I just want to let you know that um, there was a radio station on the Sunshine Coast this morning and they were talking about what you feed your daughters and the radio host called you a, a knob and a wanker and this, this woman that shared this with me, she goes, I'm really pissed off and frustrated. Surely you can sue them for defamation. Mm. I'm like, well, it's just somebody's opinion. Mm. If they have that opinion about me being a knob or a wanker, whatever context they see me in that, I have been known to have a wank from time to time and I do have a knob. <laughs> I use one to open my door, you know? <laughs> so be it. It's an opinion. Yeah, yeah. You know, and whether that's shared in a comedic way to their listeners or whether it's shared in a, an aggressive or hostile way, 
that then is based upon what that person that decides to call me that, mm. their internal dialogue and their belief systems, not only about me, but about themselves. You know, how could somebody be comfortable to be able to call somebody a derog derogatory name, mm. whether in jest or whether in anger or frustration or whether to appeal to the low in lowest common denominator of their audience and treat their audience as if they're non-intelligent human beings that need to be told how to think about somebody else. Because mm. that could be one, one way of looking at that situation. Mm. Another one could be they feel like what I'm promoting is potentially dangerous to the population. Right. So they're acting as stewards or uh, the anointed to help stop that sharing of this dangerous information that, again, I'm not forcing on anybody. Mm. I share recipes and I share uh, news articles and I share interviews like we're doing here with people that I'm inspired or intrigued about mm. to understand how they view life. What lenses do they use to see the world? And mm. that's what fascinates me because we all have, we're all human beings. Mm. Yes. What I'm talking about here and we all have a very different lens or lenses that we use to perceive ourselves and the world and the people we interact with. I guess my first comment about that, you know, like being frustrated, <laughs> it's interesting because I use great empathy where it's, you've got to have good self-awareness to know what triggers you because I personally don't like it if I'm trying to say something that's meaningful to me and someone to wrench that out of context hmm. on purpose for their own self game. That's not cool to me. What is your philosophy on resilience? Like how hmm. do you stay focused and, and calm it seems when you have a lot of noise around you commentating about what you're doing. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, someone wrote on social media today, they said, or yesterday it was, because I share the food that I cook for myself and our family, whether it's something my wife has cooked or the kids have cooked or I've cooked, you know, I'm known as a chef. You mm. know, some people would like me just to be a chef, but as yeah. you know, we wear many hats. Yes. We're, we're not, we have to be very careful what labels we put on, not only ourselves, but other people. Mm. Um, and it so happens that I label myself as Chef Pete Evans as my social media tag. I've been a chef, that's what I train to do, but I'm, I believe I'm much more than that. You are, yeah. You know? and, but I love to share beautiful recipes and some people get inspiration, especially for their children with the dishes that we, we share. So yesterday is a perfect example. I shared two boiled eggs and this wonderful company in Melbourne called Yarra Valley Caviar, where they take the caviar out of the, the, um, the fish, it's absolutely delicious. And it was one of it, my daughter's first ever solid foods that they ate after breast milk was mm. salmon caviar. And funnily enough, it's their favorite food. So mm. some people treat their children with McDonald's, for instance, or lollies or ice creams or cuddles or love or whatever it may be that's a treat. One of our treats for our kids is a teaspoon of salmon caviar. As often as we can access that and whenever it's appropriate with the dish that we're serving. So, <laughs> and it's funny, my first ever cookbook that I wrote, I think it was 20 years ago, 15 years ago I should say, uh, had soft boiled eggs with salmon caviar on it before right. I even had children because that was a chefy thing to do. If you look at all the famous chefs around the world, especially in France, one of the most famous dishes is a soft boiled egg with black caviar on top. Yes. yes. So we, I love eating that. It's eggs on eggs, you know, it's that chefy sort of thing. And my daughters love it. Like it's their, it's one of their favorite foods, eggs on eggs. Mm. And we've got some new hot dogs as well from Cleavers, which is a company I work for, mm. you know, beautiful, organic, grass-fed, wonderful, hello, uh, hot dogs. So I had a pack of them in the fridge and cooked them in the water and served that up with the kids with some chilli sauce and some sauerkraut and I shared that. Mm. And then the media within hours said, what a ridiculous meal this is that Pete Evans feeds his kids for breakfast. And honestly, it took 10 minutes from start to finish to boil an egg, take the lid off, put some caviar on, 
in that same water that we boil the eggs in, pop the hot dogs in, chop them up, a spoon of caviar. I mean, our crowd on the side, 10 minutes. And people lost their shit. Yeah. Well, people didn't, but the media were trying to imply that this is a crazy dish. Mm. You know, ridiculous. And so I shared that article on social media and said, well, I don't think it's ridiculous. I think it's just delicious, you know, and the philosophy that we go by is meat, seafood, eggs, fruit, vegetables, you know, and any combination of that is pretty much what each of our dishes look like. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's more meat, sometimes it's more seafood, sometimes it's more vegetables, sometimes it's more fruit, sometimes it's more eggs, you know, and there'll be a combination of that for either breakfast, lunch or dinner or snacks or something. And so I just said, that's just what we eat. You know, mm. sometimes it's expensive, sometimes it's budget. Someone said, how do, you, how do you deal with the constant criticism and the frustration? I said, I said, I love it. Yeah. You know why I love it? Because inadvertently, when these mainstream media sources or whoever they may be, um, whenever they reshare something that we do, mm -hmm. it goes to a larger audience. Now, their intention or their agenda is one thing, sensationalism, trying to create some sort of polarisation between myself or whatever it may be, or just looking after their advertising sponsors. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what I think, or what I get excited about, I'm like, there we go, we've got them. <laughs> it's nearly like fishing. Put the bait out there, and it's, it's not that it's bait, because it's... It's just what we share. It's how we live. But once they bite onto that hook, and they chose to bite it, again, it's a choice for them to reshare it. Mm. But for me, my audience might be a million to two million people. Their audience might be another million to two million to three million, depends on how many times it gets regurgitated or recirculated. So all of a sudden, we've got a message about healthy eating, which I'm not trying to get out to more people. But inadvertently, these, these people that are trying to ridicule get it oh, out get there. Getting it out there, yeah. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Mm. Because over the years, what's happened is like that radio host who's called me the wanker or the knob, I've had many, many, many emails and, and people coming up to me and saying, hey, Pete, you know what? I actually thought you were a dickhead. And one day I read an article that just, it just triggered me. So I wanted to do a little bit more research. And you know what? I delved into what you're promoting or what you're sharing, what's in your cookbooks, what's in your programs, what's in your Instagram feeds. And I'm off my medication mm. or I've lowered my medication. Or I'm f I no longer have depression or anxiety. Or I've lost 50 kilograms. And by the way, I've reversed type 2 diabetes. Or my daughter or son that had developmental behavioural issues, they've improved out of sight and now I have eye contact with my, with my children that I never had, mm. you know, and they don't mind me touching them anymore because they had sensory processing uh, mm. disorders. Right. So I get these messages every single day. Usually they don't start off with, hey, I, I actually thought you were a fuckwit or whatever. <laughs> I get them sometimes and they're generally from the guys, from the males. Yeah. And what big balls they have to actually admit that and reach out and say, hey, I judged you before I knew who mm, you were. Yes. So, again, whenever these stories go out there, I'm like, fantastic. You know, 95% of people or 99 might still think I'm a wanker or a knob, and that's cool. Mm. You know, but what, what about that one person that could change their life mm. because they've been triggered? Yeah. Fuck. Like... Because the ripple effect from that person, not only for themselves, but they're for their kids or their family or their work colleagues or their tribe. Mm. You know, it might have happened immediately, but a year down the track, one of their best mates that might also have, have had the same thoughts, be like, what? You're looking good, mate. <laughs> How long's it been now? It's been a year. What did you do? Well, I just changed my diet. How'd you do it? Well, I followed... Was that idiot Pete Evans so maybe he's not so much of an idiot anymore maybe he is I don't know you know yeah. and mm. that guy might the, his mate might go fuck really I don't know I'll, you know? I'll, I'll just take a short break I love it when we come back I want to touch more on this Pete this is great we'll be right back well I think the the use of 
our languages and our words. You know, I, I spoke with someone recently and, and they said, you know, the reason why we spell a word or is because it is a spell. Mm. Every word that we use can create a spell for ourselves or for others that hear it. Yeah, I like that. So it's very important for me anyway these days that I choose my words carefully and I, I'm conscious about the, what may happen because mm. of the use of my words. I want to ask you this question, Pete. Like, what have you been thinking about in terms of ideas, what's important to you in your meditation and thoughts? Yeah, I'm very careful because we live in a society, especially now, where we compare ourselves with so many people. And so many people are looking for a tribe or an identity to fit into because they're very disconnected from self. So we're seeing, you know, all you have to do is read mainstream media or watch the news and you'll see it's, there's so much division. Whether you're watching politics or religion, you know, I, I mentioned those two things before. But it's, there's a left and a right. There's Christians, Catholics, Jews, Muslims, there's Buddhists, there's, there's all these different ideologies and, and ideas and identities that we attach ourselves to. And one thing I generally bring it back to is just that we're human beings. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? What does that really mean? Mm. What do you think it means at the moment? It's, all, it's always evolving for me. I well, I think you just, you just cracked the nut on the head right there, if that's the right saying, is to evolve. Mm. Every single species yes. evolves, it, it grows. Now, the tricky one with being human is we, we need to remember who we are and not who we're meant to be from our parents' influence, from our societies or cultural influence mm. from our mainstream media's influence about what's beautiful, or what's right, or what's politically correct. You know, we, as I said to you before, we thrive when we learn. Mm. We thrive when we connect. We thrive when we teach. We thrive when we love mm -hmm. unconditionally. We need to share love and receive love. You know, it does, it's not a one-way street. Mm. It, it, love is so vitally important. We need to understand that we're going to die. Mm. We under, need to understand that we have this one experience as Matt and Pete mm. and whoever you are. And how are you going to live that life as a human being? Yeah. What are we capable of as a human being? We are probably the most adaptable species on the planet. Yep. We are probably the one of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. It, are we the biggest threat to our planet too because of our intelligence? Or? I believe we're a virus at the moment, yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. and I have no doubt that the Earth will survive, <laughs> regardless. Whether humans survive, that's another question. And all you need to do is look at the rate of chronic illness that's yeah. enveloping the world. Mm -hmm. And I say envelop because it's, it's, you know, very few are escaping this. Mm. To, live a, uh, to live a healthy, long-term, sustainable existence, very few of us will be able to do that unless something drastic changes as a collective conscious mm. movement for that. Now, what is that going to take for that to happen? Part of me thinks it's going to, there will be a, a, a breaking down. Something has to break for us to rebuild it stronger and better. Mm. So you could look at something like today, I was in the dentist and I was sitting there and I was watching mainstream media because I had the television up there. Mm -hmm. And I was watching it and today's big story was, or one of the big stories, was about mental health. Yeah. Not once did I hear anybody talking about diet, nutrition, lifestyle choices. Mm. But they've got a royal commission into this and they've got a report 
with experts that have spent a long time, and I'm not dismissing the people that are in this, but how can you not include diet and lifestyle choices when it comes, and I could be missing the point here, and maybe I don't have all the, all the information, but the snippets that I got, what I was hearing from the experts, was that um, we have a major problem here, and I know from my own experience how many people have been helped with mental illness from lifestyle choices. Oh, yeah. From, just from the simple act of removing just one food or food group can have a dramatic e e change of expression for that person's life. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying diet is the be all and end all, but it's definitely one of the tools that we can use. At the same time, today I saw a friend of mine that, that works in mental health, and he also is a qualified practitioner that is using uh, psychedelics or entheogen medicines. So we're talking about something that is scheduled as, a, as an illegal substance, even though it grows out of the ground and we've used it for millennia. Part, some people would say it's part of our human evolution <laughs> as to why we see things differently and how we grew, mm -hmm. our, our, our way of seeing the world. So he was saying that it's, the FDA has just approved in America and don't quote me here, but from what I saw in the headline was that they've just approved the use of psilocybin mushrooms and psychedelics as one of the tools moving forward to work with mental health. Right. Now, we live in a country here in Australia where cannabis is still deemed illegal for us to be able to grow it in our backyards, and a very small percentage of people have to pay an ex exorbitant amount of money for medicinal cannabis, mm -hmm. which isn't even, like, if, you, if you're going to have cannabis, then there's better and more powerful ways of using that medicine than through just the medical system mm -hmm. currently. And they know that. And for far less, you yeah. know, for, for a hundredth of the cost. So when I see something like the mental health issue up on the television screen today, and they don't talk about the tools that are available to them. They just state the problem? Are they just stating... They're stating the problem and that something has to be done about it. Now, yeah. you look at how governments work and you will, you will see that that problem will, will escalate. Mm. You will see that the agricultural problem, the bushfire problem, the, the, the health care problem in this country, w they will keep escalating. Mm. So... What am I meditating on at the moment or what am I thinking about is that there will have to become, there will no doubt become a time where these systems and, and these systems that are set up that are broken, so our medical system, our pharma, pharmacological system or pharmaceutical system, our agricultural system, the way we look after the planet, the, the land, the way we look after our animals. Mm our species that we are stewards of. Yeah. You know, I'm watching a David Attenborough series this week, you know, and about all the species that are becoming extinct yeah. from us. So I see all of these systems are in place and they may have been set up for good intentions to start with. They may have. Mm -hmm. But we're now in a place where shit's going to get really bad really soon. Well, it's already really bad yeah. for a lot of people. Mm as we saw on the thing about mental health, what we're seeing in the healthcare systems, what we're seeing with, I even today, again, I was watching the mainstream news, which is rare for me, and it was talking about that there's a lack of uh, teachers now to teach our students that are coming through. Now, whether they're being taught the right things and the wrong things, that we could have a, a separate podcast and debate about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we could potentially look at changing the education system, which is broken, into a way where, I mean, my next book is going to be titled Shit We Didn't Learn at School. Oh, I love it. You know. Yes, that's going to be great. And we were going to be looking at these systems that are set up that are broken. Mm. So what do I see? I mean, optimistically, I think I'm always an optimist, mm. but I also see the systems are going to have to break for it to be rebuilt. And it's funny because, like, even on a, if you do ever go down a plant medicine or psychedelic journey yourself with practitioners in a 
proper set and setting and you know what you're getting yourself involved with and I'm not recommending it for anybody here but through my own personal experiences you basically go into those to break down your existing system of belief or programming mm -hmm. and that can be a very frightening and challenging situation to experience but you come out of that the other side with a new program and system running so you be, you become stronger and whole more whole <laughs> maybe maybe more whole not the right word but um, you come out of that with a very different lens of perception mm. so and I just recently did a week-long plant medicine journey in Costa Rica and and I saw this happening and I, I can see this happening it's like when people talk about 5g coming out or mandatory vaccinations mm. which is coming very fast or compulsory you know I look at these things and I'm like okay well it's nearly like the the articles that people share about me to get a response you know inadvertently some good is going to come from that mm -hmm. okay. now people are like can we campaign against the dietary guidelines can we campaign against 5g can we campaign against glyphosate being used even on mainstream tv there was something about thailand rejecting the ban on glyphosate or, or today so i'm sort of of the belief that and this is just my perception i'm not here to fight and battle because that's what's been happening for so long true mm -hmm. i can only share my experience and my lens of perception through what I, what I do, through my books, through the documentaries. And we are making documentaries about these systems at the moment. Great. You share that and then it's up to people if they choose to watch it. And I'm not doing this alone. There's many people out there that are, and, and that are wanting to fix these systems. But I also see the flip side that potentially we need to go through some upheaval and what will it take for a, uni a united global presence to usher in a new awakened consciousness of how to fix the planet and connect and love? Yeah. What will that take? Will it get to the point where we lose the ability to reproduce, which is happening? Mm -hmm. It's getting harder and harder and harder and harder and wait for the next generation, next generation. You see the handmaid's tale isn't that far-fetched mm -hmm. when you see what's happening in the world at the moment apart as far as Western, uh, Western people and how hard it is to reproduce at the moment. Yeah, right. It's getting harder and harder. And on the f flip side, oh, on the other end of that, is the children that are being born these days mm -hmm. and not as robust yeah. and not as healthy mm -hmm. as the previous generation. So when they go to reproduce, what's going to happen there with the foods that they're eating, with the lifestyle choices they've got, with all of that flowing through the coming generations, there will come a point in time where this, all the systems will break down because we won't be able to deal with the healthcare system. Mm. We won't be able to deal with this ep economic greed that's out there. We won't be able to deal with everything they'll keep taxing us and whatever it may be all these systems will break down yeah and so what will happen i like the song by mayor joe mayor waiting in the world to check the theme of that mm -hmm. because what people the whole message of that song is this frustration of people we want to see change but we've got to wait for the politicians to make it or someone else we're always waiting for something to change for us to be able to make a proper change so i want to make a choice for us but now with, um, with our technology, with socials, and with a greater, I guess, span of reach through our technology, we're able to spread our messages and create awareness and educate and not keep it locked up in the hands of just the power of media and stuff to be able to filter out what they want people to hear and see. Well, it comes down to where you choose to get your information from, who sure. you choose to spend time with, how you choose to interact with this natural world that we've been blessed to have this experience mm. so for me I'm not saying I don't want to change the world I'm, I will be doing my bit my creative expression but at the same time I'm going to enjoy every single minute of this wonderful awe-inspiring journey of life yeah 
with my family, mm -hmm. with my friends, by cooking delicious food that makes me smile, that brings me optimal health, mm -hmm. by doing the activities and play that I love to do, so that every day is a, is, is a gift. But at the same time, not being silenced, not yes. running away from the problem, mm. connecting with people that are helping find solutions to these problems and systems that are breaking and sharing that information. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And I don't think it's going to come down to one person to fix this. No, no. You know, there's going to be, there, there, like everything, everything goes through these cycles. You know, there'll be a revolt or there'll be an uprising or there'll be mass death, mm. you know. The earth will, the earth will sort us out. Yeah, <laughs> nature, yeah. Nature will sort us out. Yeah, mess with nature, mate. Yeah. You know, we are, as I said, we are a, at the moment a bit of a virus mm. for the planet. Yeah. And it has so many ways of, of removing us if it chooses to. Just like we, when we have a virus, we have our elimination pathways. We can cough, we can vomit, we can shit, mm. we can sweat, we can cry, we can do anything. All of these are natural processes for us to get to a state of homeostasis. Now the earth has the same thing. Mm -hmm. It has earthquakes, it has volcanoes, mm -hmm. it has tsunamis, it has fires, it has whatever. It... And if anybody doesn't think the earth and the universe is intelligent, <laughs> like, you, you wait, look at what, how we live, look at nature. Watch one of those David Attenborough documentaries and you'll see how fucking intelligent it is. Yeah, you're right. Well, listen, I'd love to talk to you, talk about it, but we end it here. So thanks a lot for joining us, brother. Appreciate it. And so many people after this will go, I knew he was a dickhead. <laughs>